change um, someone's uh, grief status to that extent, that's something worthy of investigation. There was another um, woman who participated in research and um, sometimes during a study we do a follow-up phone reading where the medium and the sitter get to be on the phone at the same time. And um, the medium was getting information and she was saying the deceased is saying that you should sell your house, you, that you should move. I don't know what that means, that's just what I'm getting. And she finishes the reading and then the, um, the sitter's allowed to comment and the sitter said uh, that the person w that we had contacted was her son and her son had gone through a terrible divorce, it was her grown son, and he had moved back home with the parents while he got back on his feet. And they were gonna, their house was too big and as soon as he moved out they were gonna sell their house and move. And that was six years prior to this reading and it was one of those cases where she kept the room exactly the same as the day that he had unexpectedly died, I believe in an auto accident. And um, hearing this medium say that the son was saying that she should sell the house and move, um, I think she used a comment like, I can live my life, I can start to live again. I can, for, so for six years, she was kind of in suspended animation, um, and then a medium said, move, and she could live again. So there's, there's really something there. So we wanted, to, um, we wanted to look at it. So we did this pilot grief study, we just did an online survey and asked um, people who had seen a medium to rate their level of grief before the reading and after the reading and then a subset of those people had also worked with a mental health professional. So they also um, answered the question, rate your grief before and after working with the mental health professional. So I felt no grief, I felt some grief but a very low level, I felt somewhat low manageable level, I felt a somewhat high and I felt a very high almost unbearable level of grief. And we're still collecting data, but this is where we are so far. Um, uh, for the reading, you can see the, um, the people on average started, and this was, a, the N is 65 here in the, the mediumship readings. So they're a little bit higher than high, and then after the reading, they're a little bit lower than low. And that change is statistically significant to 10 to the negative 26. Um, there, then the subset of those people also worked with a mental health professional and they started much higher and that makes perfect sense. Um, if, you're, if you were at that point of my grief was unbearable, that would drive you to a counselor, not to a medium. Um, and the, no surprise, the change here was also statistically significant. But I think what was most interesting is I looked at whether this change was different than this change and that was um, also significant. So people were reporting that they felt more better, I guess you could say, more better um, after a mediumship reading than they did after uh, work with a mental health professional. So that's, you know, that's quite interesting. And at the end of the survey, we said, do you have any comments about your grief that you'd like to share? And this is what some of the people said. I felt better after being with the medium. She stated things to me that were personal from my dad that no social worker could have done. The medium reached my heart, the social worker my mind. Um, another person said, when my first mental health professional negated the reading I had with the medium, I switched to someone who understood and supported my new reality and therefore received much more constructive help with my grief. So there's a consumer of mental health care changing to a mental health professional that supported her belief system and at least um, you know entertained the possibility that uh, that this that this was happening and then another person said the combination of assistance from an MHP and a medium is of significant value in processing grief and corroborating one's belief in life on the other side so the two together um, are uh, maybe helpful than either and then either one um, separately Uh, I want to just talk about misconception mediums really fast. An in-person reading is better than a phone reading. The opposite is true. Most mediums will agree. Um, uh, when they're on the phone with you, they can block you out and their, um, their left brain need to make assessments about you and just hear what the deceased is saying. All mediums are kind, spiritual people. Nope. <laughs> 
Um, a lot of them are nasty, nasty, nasty people. So um, be aware of that. More money means more or better info. Nope, it just means that people will pay that person. The, the, the medium who gives free readings at the psychic fair may be better than anyone you've ever seen on TV or anything like that. Um, this, how to get the most out of a reading, choose wisely, ask the discarnate to be there, provide as little um, information as possible to the medium, don't create codes or ask proof questions because you know the answer to the code, so that doesn't um, eliminate telepathy as the explanation. If the medium reports the answer to the code, you knew the code, so it doesn't, that's not evidential for you. And remember that you're grieving and that colors um, any, your perception of everything. So in the future, we still need to answer these questions. Do mediums get their information telepathically? Or are they communicating with the deceased? Does participating in a mediumship reading help in grief recovery? Do measurable changes occur in the environment when a discarnate is present? Contrary to what you've seen on Ghost Hunters, none of that's been established. Um, and so we're very interested in, in, uh, in looking at that. My husband, um, who's the co-founder of Wimbridge, has 10 years experience as a ghost hunter. He hates that term. We're vegetarian. We don't like to hunt anything. Um, and then uh, what's the best way to interact and communicate with a discarnate? And the big ones, what happens when we die is there indeed life after death. Um, do we have time? I have a little pop quiz. How much time do we have? All right, a little pop quiz. This is the first one. I'll give you the answer. Socrates said, death is one of two things. Either it is annihilation and the dead have no consciousness of anything, or as we are told, it is really a change, a migration of the soul from one place to another. So here's another quote. We'll see if you can see who said these. Death is a natural part of life. Rejoice for those around you who transform into the force. Anyone? That was Yoda. <laughs> I'm surprised no one got that. That's, the, that's a good one. Um, to the well-organized mind, death is but the next great adventure. There you go. Albus Dumbledore, the headmaster of Hogwarts um, School for Witches and Wizards. Or I'm not sure what it's called. And then uh, without death, life would be meaningless. Um, no, <laughs> that's a good guess. But no, uh, is anyone familiar with the great American philosopher Dave Mustaine? He's the lead singer of Megadeth. <laughs> um, and when asked why all his songs were about death, he said, without death, life would be meaningless. Uh, I want to thank so much the SSE for having me. Um, this was just a really great experience. Um, I, 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 I feel honored to have been invited here. I want to thank the other Winbridge researchers, Adam, Chad, Mark, and Michael, our scientific advisory board, a couple of who are in this very room right now, our Winbridge members, a couple who are also in this room right now, and our research medium, Samara, Dave, Joanne, Deborah, Doreen, and Stephanie. Um, I uh, believe that in the sheet with everyone's name on it, my email address is not listed. So if you l would like to um, put my email address down, let me just go back and I'm gonna, I'll come back to this slide during questions. But I just wanna say if people visit our, um, our website, uh, you can download our, our peer reviewed publications. There's a list and contact information for our certified research mediums, the Wookerbs, uh, recommended books, uh, up to news and events, where we'll be, what we're doing. You can join our email list to be notified of where we'll be speaking and, and that sort of thing, and you can become a member online too. So thank you so much for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Julie. Okay. Uh, I don't want to create a wrong but uh, Julie, in your experience, are most now medium today? Um, I ha again, only 10% of, the, of um, the ones I've encountered um, are male. And, you know, we, we have a waiting list of 300 mediums waiting to want to be screened. Um, I, we only work with one and he has a partner that's all you know that's as much as i can say um it's an interesting it's definitely an interesting question Steve. julie you can probably anticipate that i i say this but I'm, I'm a little disturbed by the way you characterize super psi because you suggested that it's antecedently implausible and i just think it needs to be kept in mind that uh survival side that is um, the interaction between the discarnate and the medium 
or the discarnate in the uh, physical world, if the discarnate is uh, apparently knowing what people are saying at the sitting, that that degree of psychic functioning would be every bit as refined and every bit as extensive as 